Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and welcome back to my Bedrock Edition resource pack tutorial. Today, we'll finally be covering the basics of UI code. I do recommend that you watch all the previous resource pack tutorials before this one, but if you don't have the time, you should at the very least watch the Getting Started and Animated Textures tutorials. Knowing how JSON works is a requirement for editing UI. Before we get started, however, I need to set some expectations. The JSON UI system in Minecraft Bedrock is a monster. Sometimes it doesn't work in the way that makes sense. Sometimes something that works in one place doesn't work somewhere else, and it's difficult to know why. You have to be patient when working with UI. You won't leave this video knowing how to recreate the Legacy Console Edition UI in Bedrock, for example, but maybe you'll be able to move the buttons on the main menu around. Maybe you'll learn how to change the text on certain screens. Perhaps you could even add child elements to menus to display new information. So, without further ado, let's decipher Minecraft Bedrock's UI files. Most UI screens have a corresponding file in the UI folder of the base resource pack. For example, the inventory and crafting menus are controlled by the inventory screen.json file. The main menu is controlled by start screen.json. Let's open startScreen.json as our example file. Opening the file greets you with this. It may look like a wall of mysterious JSON objects and arrays, but there are actually only two main things to pay attention to here. The file's namespace and the file's elements. Every UI file has a unique namespace. It's usually right at the top of the file. The namespace of the main menu is start. The file's elements are literally everything else. Each object in the file is one element. Side note, Minecraft Bedrock officially refers to elements as controls. I'm going to call them elements and not controls because there's also a property called controls, which is a different thing entirely. Side note over, elements are used to construct the screen we see in-game. Each element can be given many different properties, like size, orientation, and offset. We're going to ignore most of the properties for now, however, and focus on the two most important ones, type and controls. These are the most important properties for an element because they dictate how other elements interact with it. Let's take a step back and examine the file from top to bottom. No, not literally the top of the file to the bottom, but the top of the element hierarchy to the bottom. The element hierarchy is what I call the order that elements are put together to build UI screens. At the peak of the element hierarchy is one screen element. This is an element which has a type property set to screen. The screen element in the main menu UI code is simply called start underscore screen. Start screen has a special property called dollar sign screen underscore content. All this means is that the start screen will use the element defined in this property as the main content of the screen. It's currently set to start.startScreenContent. However, if we search for that element in the file, it isn't anywhere besides the screen content property. So where's the element this property is referring to? It turns out this phrase is not the name of an element, but the combination of a file's namespace and an element, separated by a period. When Minecraft looks for an element you defined, instead of looking through every file in the UI folder, it only looks in the file with a matching namespace. Since the start screen's namespace is start, Minecraft will look for an element called start screen content in the start screen.json file. Now, when we search for start screen content, we actually find the element that screen content was referring to. This element is a great example for the way elements are typically constructed. It has both type and controls properties. Its type is panel, while its controls property contains an array with multiple objects. The controls property is how elements are put together. Think of controls as a verb. Start screen content controls these objects. And what exactly are these objects in the controls array? If we read their names, we have skin panel, main buttons and title panel, online buttons panel, text panel, and realms pending invite panel. These are all different elements which control different parts of the main menu. 
If, for example, we removed the skin panel object here and loaded up the main menu, the profile button and the 3D skin render are gone. We can do the same thing for the main buttons and title, or the online buttons, or anything else in this controls array. But how can these tiny, three-line objects contain all the information needed to build the title, buttons, skin sidebar, and online buttons? Simply, they don't. The element hierarchy continues down through the controls array to more elements in other places in the file. These objects are referring to other elements using an at sign and a phrase, like how the screen content property referred to another element using a phrase. The at sign changes how the phrase works, so instead of inserting one element into another, a new element is created that has identical properties to the original. It's slightly confusing, so I made this example UI file to help explain things. This file is very basic. There's only a namespace set to namespace and two adult elements. One of these elements is called original element and the other is example element. The example element has a controls array with one child element. The child element has a phrase attached to it that refers to the original element above. So what the example element actually controls is a copy of the original element. All the properties of the original element stay the same for the copy. The size, offset, type, and layer are all preserved. But sometimes, when copying an element using a phrase, you don't want to keep everything exactly the same. It can be useful to change properties on a per-object basis without rewriting everything, after all. To change properties when copying an element, just write the same property under the copy and change the definition. To change the size of this copy of the original element, I'll just write size under the copy and define it how I want. Circling back to the controls property, the simplest way to think of it is, it attaches elements to other elements. By the way, copying an element also copies its controls array, which is how the element hierarchy is formed. Elements control other elements which control even more elements, all the way down to the level of individual labels textures, and buttons, which nicely brings us to the type property. Type determines how an element arranges its child elements, as well as which properties work on the element. Like I said before, type is one of the most important properties, so you should always define it when creating an object. Let's go over the most used element types. Panel is by far the most used type of element, but the truth is, panel elements do nothing unique. A panel is an empty space. You can change its size and offset, but panels have no special properties. All its controlled elements are put into a jumbled mess at the center of the panel, unless you're using offset properties. That's true for most types, actually, so I won't bother mentioning how child elements are arranged unless there's a change. One type with a big change is stack panel. Stack panel elements are similar to panel elements, but instead of throwing all their controlled elements on the same point, they're stacked vertically. This is what's used for button stacks like on the main menu, and just about every other stack of elements in the game. If you want the elements to stack horizontally instead, you can add the orientation property and set it to horizontal. Image elements are how we can bring textures into UI. These elements have the unique property texture, which is defined by the file path to the texture starting at the root resource pack folder. Similarly, label elements are how we bring text into UI. To write on the label, we need to add the text property, which is defined by either the text we want to use on the label or a translatable identifier from the language files. Those are the four main element types, but there are many more. Now that we've covered the controls and type properties, you know the fundamentals of JSON UI. There are so many paths we could take from this point. To be honest, it's very hard to explain UI code in a video like this because no matter what direction I choose, we're going to run into things I haven't explained yet. In this video alone, where I pared it down to the most basic, simple parts, there were still too many unexplained things to count. It's just something you need to be comfortable with. You can't know everything about UI code at once. Even I don't! Since there's so much to explain, I'm splitting the UI tutorial into multiple pieces. This was the first. Next up, we'll be modifying UI, 
which will explain best practice for changing elements in an unintrusive way, the same way as official marketplace partners. For now, though, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.